The jobs report, a serious surprise. In fact, analysts were not expecting this. 211,000 jobs were added in the month of April. The unemployment rate dropped to 4.4 percent. That's a 10-year low. The unofficial but real unemployment rate it might be even bigger news. We're going to discuss it now with David Bunsen and Eric Beach is back with us as well. David, let me start with you. Uh, you know, it's so interesting because when the jobs numbers came out, the market was sort of uh, not necessarily indifferent, but there was not this sort of joy that you would have expected. What do you think the confusion was, and, and did maybe the street realize as the session went on this was a pretty good deal? I think it has to do with the headline number being a little better than expected, but nothing overwhelming. The 211 versus about 180, 185 expected. But that underemployment number at 8.6%, the lowest number since early 2007. And that's the number that matters to President Trump because that's what reflects people. He campaigned a lot about this. People that are taking part time work when they wanted full time. Right. Wage growth being 2.5%. Very few government jobs being a part of the number. So, in the weeds, as the market absorbed what was taking place, things looked better throughout the day. You no, know what else I liked, Eric, was uh, almost 300,000 people who were part time workers no longer part time. That suggests it's starting to move from part time to full time. That number coming down a lot, coming down quickly, and that may be a forward looking indicator. At some point, President Trump's going to have to get some credit for his job creation and the economy. I mean, when he took office, you know, the Dow was about 18,000 points. It's now at 21,000. There's been about 700,000 jobs created, if you include January. Uh, you know, so. You know, he's created a culture of confidence into the marketplace, and you're right. You know, analysts have continued to get it wrong, and the predictions have been wrong because I think the the culture of confidence that now he presents to you know the, uh, all Americans, especially middle class Americans, is that you know we're going to protect American jobs, and those are the policies that he's been instituting. And I, and I think at the, at the end of the day, you know, we have to keep creating those policies that you know make sure that we keep our jobs here at home. Right. You know, David. One thing I talk about is. And a lot, there's a lot of anxiety from you know people who uh, are, are, are serious market watchers, but not necessarily in the market. <laughs> and these artificial timelines, you got to get this done in the first 100 days or the first 200 days. I think uh, the economy is confident in this administration, and some of the wills have started to move. I mean, there's that so-called soft data, but we're seeing the so-called hard data, particularly earnings. Uh, we could see movement. We could, and I think that whether it be consumer confidence, business confidence, or market confidence, that seems to be the case. That even when there is seemingly bad news, the first time the House was not able to get the repeal replaced done, the market sort of shrugged it off. I think that ultimately, we've been talking to clients about this all year, the problem was the market got a little ahead of itself by not factoring in the political volatility that would be there. But ultimately, getting tax reform done, getting health care reform done, the, the people believe it's going to happen, and it is playing out in the data now with jobs. And I think throughout the rest of the year, you're going to see tremendous GDP growth. Um, I agree with Eric. The president will end up getting credit if those things surface. I don't know that 107 days is, is uh, enough time to gauge sure. it all, but sure. I think that ultimately they're on the right track and people do have that confidence. Uh, Eric, is part of this also, uh, to David's point, perhaps some confusion on who had the president's ear more, uh, but now it seems clear, particularly on economic issues, uh, the combination of Gary Cohn and, and Steven Mnuchin, I think Wall Street has a tremendous amount of confidence in those guys. When they speak, they speak with such clarity that you really believe they're going to get this done. Look, in the spirit of the NBA playoffs, you know, they say the free throw line doesn't lie. It's all, the numbers don't lie. The market follows confidence. And, you know, you're right. I mean, there might be more advisors. There might be, a, a, you know, the mindset of, hey, we, we know how to work Wall Street. We know how to understand the economy. We know how to create jobs. But it all boils down to President Trump and his campaign rhetoric, and he's following through with those kind of uh, promises during the campaign, which is to keep jobs at home. When you talk about things like repatriating uh, American money for CEOs, well, what's that going to do? It's going to allow them to create more jobs here at home. So uh, the, the market is following leadership, and President Trump is leading. 